Hey, we're here back inside the cube, continuing the conversation with David Merrill from IBM Chief Technology Security Office. Is that what you're? Uh, you're I, well, <laughs> I'm a strategist in our, our our Chief Information Security Office, right? So I own our our mobile security direction, um, specifically for inside of IBM for all of our employees. IBM's a big company. Obviously, everyone's heard of IBM, but I mean, you you handle a huge base. Uh, diverse networks, applications, um, and you've got to put the strategy together. What's your view of the current landscape right now relative to mobility and security? I mean, here at Juniper, their, their slogan is defending your life, mobile life, your digital life, um, and more of it's all mobile. What's so, still going on in the market? So, so there's there's this balance going on right now, right? There's, there's obviously the desire for our employees to want their office in their pockets, right? Our data in their pockets all the time, at the same time, that, that's very scary for the enterprise, right? So it kind of says we need to focus on how are we controlling and securing the data on those smartphone devices so that we end up with at least the right security controls on the given device for that kind of data that ends up there. So it's kind of this understanding of here's how we, we finitely need to control that data. What role does this person play, i.e. what are the likely data types that will end up on their phone so that when you marry them to a smartphone, the right controls are in place to protect that data that you're putting on the device. Is data really a centric theme for the for the mobile worker now? I mean, honestly, and I have an opinion there, but I mean, you guys deal with, you know, siloed enterprises, big enterprises, a lot of data, different applications tied to data. Are those silos breaking down and do things like virtualization enable more of a, a heavier, more compute and more storage centric backend? And does that free up more robust data access on the, on the mobile device? So, well, I think we're going to see two models, right? I think we're going to see, we're definitely going to see the virtual desktop approach as it applies to smartphones, where a lot of the data stays in the enterprise, right? It never actually resides on the smartphone. But clearly, as we look at some of the smartphone uses, the data is going to be there. It's going to tie back into the data center. Um, I think that the real value, if you will, well, you know, what excites employees is being able to actually do some of their enterprise computing functions on the smartphone. So, of course, with that goes, if I'm going to have the data there, I have to be able to protect that data. You guys just had a really strong acquisition recently, a company called Storewise, which says real-time data compression, or, you know, I mean, real-time data is a very valuable uh, commodity out there in the market today. Um, user data is very, very important for people's privacy, but also for enabling better application support in real time. Um, where are we with that in terms of um, you know, safe, safety? Um, what are some of the exploits? What are some of the security dangers that you're seeing? I mean, because you know, everyone wants a mobile phone. I want to be at my kids' uh, games and check my email, but not be fully checked in, but you know, be asynchronously connected and respond to conference calls. We all do that now. But what are the risks? Well, I mean, people don't know those. Explain them. So, so the value, right, is really that marriage of, of work and personal, right? That work-life balance that we're all trying to get to as our work life becomes bigger. Um, for us, in terms of the data, it, it really does tie back to the kinds of controls, right? So for given kinds of data, classifications of data, we have very specific brunch. controls. So what it says is, at the smartphone, it really says, there are going to be different controls depending on what the data is, so that if we end up with, let's say, personal sensitive data, you know, really federally regulated data, if you will, well, that carries with it some very specific kinds of requirements on that endpoint. Every employee may not handle that kind of data in their role. I mean, they certainly still have yeah. their personal data, but in terms of you know what data is actually federally regulated that they have, that that drags with it a bunch of extra controls that maybe the norm employee wouldn't have. So it, it's really this migration too of not one size fits all anymore, mm -hmm. right? Each phone doesn't need to be secured the same exact way, but it does need to be secured commensurate with the data that's sitting on it. So Juno was introducing this Juno's Plus software mobile security suite, defending your, your mobile life is their slogan. What's IBM's role here? Talk about why you're here and some of the things you're, you're talking about today. So, so Juniper has been a partner on my journey for, for a couple years now. Um, in fact, it, it goes back almost three years ago when, when I was accused of fixing a problem that didn't even exist. Um, but it was pretty evident to me that as we looked at the threat landscape, that if smartphones became a primary computing device, the threat landscape would follow. That there's no doubt that they, that would be attacked. So obviously, we, I wanted to be ready, right? <laughs> I didn't want to wait till that happened and then scurry around figuring out, okay, now, oh my God, what do I do now? Um, so we started that journey back then. With, with S Mobile, ha have since uh, been acquired to become uh, Juno's Pulse. So we've actually been on this journey for a while. Interestingly, even as I boarded those first initial phones, 
we found malware. <laughs> so it exists. This is not an urban legend. Okay. We're here. You can hear everything starting up here. We're on the pregame show here at the Juniper Press Conference. Uh, we're here with David Merrill from IBM. IBM, Thanks. big supporter of Juniper. Thanks for coming on Inside the Cube. Appreciate it. We'd love to have you back, talk about security. We're doing a lot of dark cloud stuff, so I appreciate it.